the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 93 of The Daily Mother Swole. Flashing around. Why, thank you, Sassy McTits. Thank you for the birthday wishes. It is my birthday, and today, today, we are going to discuss the tale of two six-packs. One here, and the other is right down here. So I think this is the first time... Officially, alcohol has made its way onto the Daily Swole. It makes it onto the live broadcast quite frequently, along with other debauchery. But I think this is the first, I think this is the first daily, like, swole, you know, drinking. And I think, I wanted to talk about a couple general concepts. Uh, first off, yeah, debauchery is great. If you didn't see my Daily Swole yesterday, in my opinion, that was the best episode thus far number 92 so if you haven't caught that one please go on my youtube channel check it out give me a like i'd appreciate that um watch that it was a great episode i really enjoyed it and the funny thing is i was out by the pool yesterday and i was having a beer i wasn't getting wasted i was having a beer although i did bring six down with me just in case you know just in case and i had i was drinking one and i was listening to my podcast because i often listen to my podcast to you know, just listen to, just, I want to hear what you all hear. So I listen to podcasts that way I can, you know, listen to maybe certain words I'm saying, or oh, I didn't explain that properly, or I'll do better next time, this, that, and the other. And I wasn't going to work out, and I got motivated by my own podcast. The one that I did that day, I listened to it, and I'm sitting there like, fuck, I got to go work out. And I went, I had a great workout. I had a great <laughs> I listened to my own material. It was great. It was so motivating, and it was so it was so on point that it got me like out of laying by the pool with beer, and it was good. It was good. It was good stuff. So here's what I want to do. I know it was absolutely sick. It was crazy, and I had a sick workout. I put it on Periscope. Ah, oh, it was great. It was an awesome. It was great. Just a feeling like man. I'm sitting there, not that, you know, I wouldn't have been just as fine just sitting there, but I was like, I actually got motivated. You know, I'm fine with both. I'm fine with, I'm not a hypocrite or anything like that. I would, um, I would have been just as fine just staying and relaxing and having some more drinks. Uh, so I want to go over a couple of points and I think there's this, I wouldn't say you call it a disconnect, but there are like these two sides with exercise and alcohol. There are two conflicting, you know, it's like it's two teams, you know, it's black and white, it's bearded and unbearded, you know, it's muscular and it's not so muscular, you know, there's two teams, there's two sides and I feel like it's like if you have alcohol, you can't be fit or if you, it's almost, I mean, it just feels like they're both really, they're not interconnected, it's like you can't have one without the other. Now, I'm not a big fan of everything in moderation. I'm not a big fan of everything in moderation. I feel like that is a cop-out. I feel like that's an excuse. I feel like people use everything in moderation as a means to, you know, get away with things or do extra, extra bad stuff because, oh, everything in moderation, I'll do this. I mean, you're not measuring anything. You're just doing, it's for your conscience. It's like everything in moderation for my conscience. But that's not really how you should be going about it. Moderation in terms of, yeah, creating habits, creating good habits. That's a great point. That's a great word. Habits. Habits are formed over weeks, months, years. And I haven't always, I never drank excessively. I never, I mean, I've had my nights. I think everyone pretty much has when you're first learning what alcohol is or you're having a celebration and you drank too much and you had one of those shitty feelings, but I never binge drink. You know, I, I don't, I never did that really. And I don't do that now. That's for certain. So having a couple here and there is really harmless, but my purpose of me talking about this is because yeah, I'm lean. Yes. I have a six pack. Yes. I eat a lot of junk. You know, I push the boundaries. I could be, I could eat healthier. I could be tighter with my, with, with my own nutrition. I just don't care. 
I just don't care enough to be a little bit leaner. Why? You know, it's going to sacrifice for me too much enjoyment, too much brain space. There's no need for me to get a little bit extra shredded. And generally when I'm in a positive mood and I'm more upbeat and I'm feeling great about things, I start to lean out. I'm very connected mentally. I'm very connected mentally in terms of like my muscle development and the way I, the way I look to the way I feel. And everyone's different. We're all connected that way in a sense, but I feel more connected in that sense than maybe some of, maybe some of you. When I'm positive, when I feel great, when I feel in a good mood, when I'm happy, when I have a positive outlook, you know, I just, I have better pumps. My muscles look more full. It's just everything. And of course your lens is different. Yeah. When you look better, you feel better. And then when you feel better, you look better because you look better to yourself. So I take liberties and I'm never saying do exactly what I do to get the way I look. Cause you'll never look like me. You're never going to look like me. And I'm not saying that you can't see a lot of results, but you're going to look like you. You're going to look like the best version of you. You'll never look exactly like me. You'll never have deltoids and biceps exactly like me. Hell in your, in, in people's opinions, it could even be better. You could look even better than this. I mean, that's so subjective, but you'll never look exactly like me no matter how hard you try because we have different muscle insertions, different genetics. We've been lifting. We have a different background, different history, different ethnicity, different, just different things in our life. So when you're trying to do something, when you're trying to make a change, you do have to be more strict. That's kind of what I'm saying. You can get, can you get abs while you're drinking alcohol, while you're smoking? I mean, it's possible. Anything's possible. But genetically, most people are going to have a tough time, you know, not eating properly and have the body change because the body doesn't want to change. Understand this. The body doesn't want to change. It's just like you, how you don't want to get out of your routine. You don't want to change your routine. He is very handsome. You don't want to change your routine. Your body does not want to change. Your body doesn't want to do anything different. So to lose weight, to build muscle is effort. It's work. It's challenge. Yeah, I look like Jesus. I turned beer into muscle though. Not that pussy that turns water into wine. Who the fuck wants to drink wine? Damn, beer into biceps. Bam. (laughs) <laughs> so in terms of what you want, if you want to change, you have to be strict. I was having this conversation with someone who might be interested in doing some personal training, but her mind's not in the right place. She, you need to really be strict. If you want to, right off the bat, it's like, well, you know, I drink some wine. Can I, you know, but I can have a glass. You know, I drink a little bit too much alcohol probably. And she was telling me, I'm like, yeah, well, if you want to see change, you have to be strict. She's like, oh, well, can I have like maybe like one glass? If you're already looking for a way out, for a cheat, for a way to cut corners before you even start, you're already screwed. People look for that. They look for this, like, you know, they already look to cheat before they're even on, on a roll. You know, you start a diet. It's like, I start a diet, but I can have one glass of wine after dinner. So I'll do my workout. I'll eat this. I'll eat this. I'll eat this. And then I'll do one glass of wine after just one. It's like, you're already like saying, okay, how shitty can I eat? And then hopefully see results. It's hard enough to get results, people. It's hard enough to see change. Get that through your head. It's hard enough. It's hard enough. It's hard enough to see. It's hard enough to see results. Cut the wine, cut the beer, Cut the alcohol, cut it all. Maybe, Tank, or TMK, maybe, maybe. Just get rid of it. You don't need it. It's certainly more of a chance of it hurting than helping, that's for sure. It's just stuff that most people don't need because it's sugars that get absorbed quickly. And here's the problem. Your body needs to learn how to metabolize food. Your body needs to learn how to handle its hormone balance. Your body needs to learn where calories go, where they're taken from, and where they're going to be used in the body to rebuild muscle tissue. Your body has to learn that. So think about school. How long does it take for you to learn language? How long does it take for you to learn math? How long does it take for you to learn history? You have to study. You have to go to school for years. How long does it take for you to learn how to do surgery? Well, you go to four years of medical school. You do residency. Then you do specialty. It takes years. You have to teach. You have to teach. 
good for your heart is different than seeing abs. I don't give a shit about the heart right now. Yeah, yeah, probably, Tommy. I mean, there are a lot of things that are good. Coffee is good for antioxidants. You know, beer is good and beer is healthy. You know, of course, there could be beer with natural flavors in this. Surgeon takes 12 years. Yeah. Four, uh, four college, four medical school, and then five, that's probably 13, actually. I think five residency. Or who cares? I mean, off topic. But yeah, there are things that are good for your heart is different. We're t- that's a different concept. I'm not saying doing things that are good for your heart or bad for you. Of course they're good. But I'm talking about seeing results like physical change. You know, I'm talking about seeing physical change rather than, okay, is this good for my skin tone or my elasticity? I'm not talking about that. So it's good input. So you're trying to cut corners before you even start. Your body needs to learn how to metabolize. It needs to learn how to balance insulin. It learns, it needs to learn how to regulate itself. And if you're already giving it information that's false from the beginning, it's going to be really hard to stay on track. It's going to be really hard to bring and rein that shit back in. You do need to be strict at the beginning when you're trying to lose and trying to make change. The stricter, the better. The problem with strict is that most people can't stick to it. That is the reason why when I am guiding people towards a healthier lifestyle, when I'm helping them try to lose weight, I am more lenient in my instructionals. I am more lenient and understanding with their brain processes. So you have to understand in order to be consistent, you have to be consistent. That sounds really dumb, but it's really true. You have to do it every day. So if you're telling someone that eats tons of meat and you're like, okay, you can get, you can get your six pack. You can get that, but you have to be a vegan now. And the person's like, oh, I really want a six pack. Do I really have to, you know, be a vegan? And the person's like, yes, you really do have to be a vegan. And the guy's like, oh, my God, I love meat. Oh, sh- um, uh, all right. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I, I could do it. I really want abs. I really want abs. You sure? He's like, yeah, I really want abs. Let's do it. So then he starts eating, you know, soy and tofu and all that garbage and starts to see a little bit of change, maybe, but low mood, not happy, not enjoying losing strength, just, and doesn't stick to it. Let's say it would have worked. Let's say that's exactly the way it should go. For example, it was so extreme, the change at least, there was no transition. It was just something that the person could not adhere to. They couldn't stick to. So first off, you start working with caloric restriction. You start manipulating certain foods, certain choices. I'm fine eating meat, okay? You need to make, learn how to make better choices. You need to learn how to make better choices. Those choices that you make are going to lead to the result. So the tighter you are, with your diet, the tighter you are with your training, the tighter you are with your change, the better it will be, hands down. I didn't drink regularly. I have beer regularly when I was bulking, when I was going all ham trying to bulk up. Thanks, Jesse. I appreciate that. I'm Busker. Thanks for the birthday wishes. But I do now. I have a lot of momentum. Momentum counts for a lot. Momentum counts for a lot. You have the boulder rolling. You have the snowball that's rolling down the mountain. Little sticks and little kind of eh, little pebbles on the, on the mountain is just going to bulldoze right over that. Okay? It's just going to bulldoze through it. It's like a train going 70 miles an hour down the tracks. You throw a stick or a twig on the track like a penny, and it's going to slam right through it. If the train is just getting started and you're throwing sticks and stuff on the tracks, it could gum up the spokes and it might not get that momentum because it hasn't even gotten started yet. Think about that. A train spins its wheels and when it's slowing, when it's at the beginning, it's easier to stop the train than when it's going 70 miles an hour and has momentum. Do I get drunk before working out? No, I don't. Sometimes a cheat meal can help. That's a whole other conversation. But, you know, with strict dieting, sometimes a cheat meal can ramp up metabolism. That's absolutely true in saturated glycogen stores. But those are strategies that are meant for people that are in shape. Those are strategies that are meant for people that already have that momentum. And I think you can agree with that. Those are for people that already have the building blocks in place that can start doing some of these high-end tweaks. So supplements, 
little um, little extra supplements when people say, oh, well, I heard glutamine is good for you or this. Maybe. It's not going to help you get bigger. That's not what you need. You need to eat right. You need to train like a fucking animal. That's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. And that's what yesterday was all about. It's the hard work. People are looking for the quick fix, the pill, blah, blah, blah. You've heard this a thousand times. But it's more than just that. It's more than just a quick pill. They're looking for the easy way, looking for the cheat. They're looking for half the effort. Or they're not doing the research or putting their time in to put all the effort in. So in a tale of two six-packs, the six-pack being the beer and the other six-pack being, well, actually my 10-pack because I have 10 packs. Uh, But you need to be consistent. You need to be strict. You need to get that momentum. You need to get that bulldoze. You need to get that bulldoze effect. You need to get that snowball effect. You absolutely have to. If you're not getting that snowball effect, you shouldn't be cheating. You don't deserve it. You haven't earned it. You haven't earned the right to cheat. Thank you, El Capitan. I appreciate it. You haven't earned the right to cheat. You just haven't. You do have to earn that right. And you don't have to earn it for me. You don't have to earn it for society. You have to earn it for your body. You have to earn the right to start throwing shit in the path. So why are you putting X, Y, and Z in your mouth? Why are you putting that in your mouth? Is it helping you? Is it hurting you? Yeah, do fucking work. Do the work. Don't look for the out at the beginning. The tale of two six packs is a lot of hard work is a lot of hard work. You saw me work out yesterday, but also I'm not drinking 20 beers. And if I do, I'm certainly not doing that every day. That's for damn sure. Today I might, I don't even know. I'm, I'm deciding whether I want to do whiskey or want to do beer. It's hot out. So probably cold beer. We'll see, you know, and yeah, I see alcohol does have negative effects other than fat gain. You know, you could have like low mood. You can have, you know, other swings. You can have emotional, you can have sleeping problems, you know, it, it affects, you know, hormone levels that can affect hunger and it's dehydrating because your body, uh, you know, flushes more of the body's water into the kidneys because the alcohol inhibits hormones that help reabsorb water into the body. So the problem is that's why you pee so much when you drink. It's not that you're peeing out the liquor you're drinking. It's that the hormone, the liquor, the actual liquor is inhibiting hormones that regulate uh, water levels in the body. So your body is sending more water to the kidneys than it should to urinate. So you're actually peeing more than you should be peeing. You're not that third. You're not that you don't have to go to the bathroom that badly. In other words, you're peeing out water from the liquor, the beer, like the water that's in the beer, you're pouring out, you're peeing out that water, but you're also peeing out extra water that you need in your body. So you pee out too much. That's why you get dehydrated. That's why you get headaches. That's why you get hungover and stuff like that. That's one of the reasons. So if you didn't know that, it's really interesting. That's why you get dehydrated because your the alcohol interrupts hormone levels that regulate the diuretic hormone that regulates water uh, regulation in the body. So you pee more than you should. You get rid of necessary water in addition to like the water from the beer and stuff. Okay. So if you're drinking alcohol, the only thing that gets rid of you know water doesn't help you become less intoxicated time does. So if you're drinking liquor, let's say you're drinking a lot, you know, you'll be drinking at least, you know, consistently all night, have a glass of water in between. You're not going to sober up. It's just going to help you stay hydrated and you'll have less of a hangover. People think that drinking water while they're drinking alcohol, oh my God, I'm going to get sober. We think water is like a magical sobering drug. No, it's going to help you have more water in your body. You won't get as hung over. The alcohol is still going to have its effect on your body. The only thing that gets rid of being drunk is time for your body to, you know, process the alcohol, the liver to filter it. So that's a trick right there. If you want to drink heavily, just drink water with your stuff. So should I drink beer or not? It depends, man. It depends. So let's just break this down. Let's, let's, let's wrap this up. Can you have abs? Can you be fit and drink? Sure. Are you where you need to be to do that? I don't know. Are you where you need to be to drink alcohol with your training. I would be careful drinking on days when you don't work out. Use on days when you're increasing your carbohydrates, let's say after a workout. You know, if you, but here's it comes down to, are you happy with where you are? Do you have the body that you want? Remember, I'm not judging you. If you wanna be 300 pounds overweight, that's your life. And you wanna drink, that's fine. You're probably gonna die in a couple years, but that's up to you, that's your life. I can't hold a gun to your head. I'm not going to pressure you. 
You do what you want to do. It comes down to are you pleased with where you are? You could have a beer post-workout. Yeah, I've done that. I've drank wine post-workout. I drink a beer after a workout all the time. I like to. Well, 300 pounds overweight. Well, people are four or 500 pounds sometimes. So are you happy where you are? Are you happy? If you're happy where you are, then have a beer. Enjoy. If you can maintain where you are and have alcohol and you notice that you can maintain your figure and you feel good, then drink if you want to. It's your life. It's your life. But if you're not pleased with where you are, stop trying to cut corners when you're not even there yet because it will inhibit you. It will block you. It will gum you up. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I drink and you see me drink and I talk about it because I'm pretty satisfied. If I wanted to really get leaner, and I say that sometimes. Remember yesterday I was saying people want to want things. It's not wanting, it's wanting to want. They want to want things. So I tell myself sometimes, man, I want to get leaner. Yeah, I'm going to get really shredded in the summer. I'm going to get really lean. I look in the fridge. I'm like, oh, there's beer. I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'll have a beer. That's all right. I'm like, I don't really want it because otherwise I would do it. I've done it before. I've done it before. I could be really strict. I could be really strict. I don't have to have ice cream. I don't have to have you know, candy, as much candy as I do. I don't have to splurge when I splurge. I don't have to. I don't have to drink a beer. I don't have to. I'm not addicted. I don't have to. I do it because I want to, because I don't really want to get leaner. I don't really want to. I'm like, oh, it'd be nice, but right now, I'm not willing to put in the work. I'm distracted. I'm not focused. I don't really care about getting leaner than I already am at this point. There's really no need. I mean, you guys see me in the gym. Like, my abs are popping out. Like, I really, what am I trying to accomplish? Like, what am I trying to, I mean, I'm not getting on stage. There's really no reason for me to get leaner right now at this point. There's no absolute need. And if I wanted to, give me a couple weeks, give me a week or two, and I could make a big difference. A few beers, like one or two, before a workout, one or two. I had one yesterday, I had one yesterday, but it was like an hour before because I was out by the pool. I had a beer, just one, and then I had pre-workout. <laughs> but here's my point. If you're happy with where you are, then enjoy it. Enjoy your life. If you're not happy, then buckle down, understand what you really want, and if you really do want it, then cut the shit that don't, so it doesn't serve you and get it done. That's simple. Cut the shit that doesn't serve you and get it done. The tail two six packs is simple. You can have a six pack and you can drink if you can have a six pack and drink. How's that for an answer? If you can get away with it, you can do it. But it's much better to try to go for the six pack and go for the lean first than, and just add it into your macros. Add it into your macros. Don't overdo it. But stop trying to cut corners. Stop trying to throw things in your path before you have the momentum to even get to that point. If you're not there yet, if you're not where you need to be, if you're not where you want to be yet, you don't have a right to start cutting things short, to start you know, cutting corners, start throwing things in the path of on the way to your goal. Because guess what you're doing? You're throwing things in the path on the way to your goal. So think about it. When you eat, when you drink, ask yourself every time you take a bite, every time you take a sip of something, is this helping me or how is this helping me? Not is this good for me? How is this helping me? If it's helping you, oh, it's going to make you put me in a better mood. Okay. Now, how is that helping you? Oh, well, I'm going to feel better. Okay. Well, how is that helping you towards your goal? Uh, I mean, is it going to affect your, your physique? Does it have any negative impact on your workout if you drink a few beers beforehand? I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it also depends on the person, but you have simple sugars entering the body, but alcohol can uh, you know, definitely affect you know, th- I mean, one beer, a few beers. To be honest, I don't, I, I don't have all the science on what alcohol will do to saturation of blood in the muscles at this time. So I'm not even going to talk about that on a scientific level just because I have to just brush up and look at a couple things first. But let's just put it this way. The top people that train and I don't do it, no one else does that I know. Some people smoke weed before they work out. That's his personal preference. I don't drink alcohol. Yesterday was the closest I've drank a beer before a workout in a long, I mean, I don't even remember. It was just one beer too. But usually when I have one beer, it's like, oh, I'm not working out or I'm done for the day and I, you know, so I, I, after workout, that's different. After workout, I'll have a beer too. Yeah, sure. 
Why not? But before, you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And there was research, and this is interesting. This is, this is interesting. I, I had this, it was a study. I ripped it out of like men's health or men's fitness. We're talking like 15 years ago. And I had it like in my pocket during college, and it said muscle building or muscle growth is impaired 22% the day after a night of heavy drinking. So let's say you work out on Friday really hard, then you go out and you booze all night the next day. The development of your muscle, the repair and the growth from that workout or from is impaired about 25% a quarter, which might not seem like that much, but it adds up. Some people drink regularly. In other words, it does affect your body's ability to repair. But you know how much that depends on how much you drink. A beer after a workout, if you're training hard, you're trying to bulk up, you know, you'll be fine. It all depends on how lean and how your body reacts. If your body doesn't react well and you start gaining more fat and you don't like it, then guess what? It's not good for you. You shouldn't do it. But if you could have a six pack and you have a couple beers and you could look really lean, why the fuck not, right? Enjoy. Enjoy. If you can get away with it, you can do it and you're healthy and you look the way you want to and you're happy, it's your life. Live your life. Enjoy it. But if you're not where you need to be, you need to tighten shit up and stop making excuses and fucking get it done. Because cutting corners or trying to plan cheat meals before you even have the thing that you want is just, you're just slacking. You're just slacking. You're making excuses and you're being a, you're bitching out. You're afraid. You're afraid to put in real work. And you know what that means? Just like yesterday's podcast and yesterday's Daily Swole, you just don't really want it. You want to want it. You say you want it, but you don't really want it. There's nothing wrong with that either, but just don't lie to yourself. Thank you, everyone, for joining me on my birthday busk, my birthday swole. I am 33 years large and still gaining, still gaining. And just so you know, like early 30s is really when you can start pe- you know, building the peak muscle. One of the reasons why my muscle starting to carve up, and I realized this lately, and I'm just working, I'm just getting really fucking like, you know, definition, shape, is because it's all those years combined. It's that compilation of five years of training, six, seven, eight, nine. That's why a lot of Mr. Olympias, they get bigger and more hard because they get muscle maturity. So the more you lift and the longer you lift, the muscles get more dense and more dense and more hard and more cut and more separated. So I'm super am 33. Right now, people peak in the 20s. I'm peaking now. Like right now, I'm like in the, I'm in the meat of my gains. So the next few years are going to be absolutely sick. So I'm saying this is the body and this is why I do a lot of yoga and this is why I don't push myself. This is why I take care of myself because right now is that turning point where I'm bulking and I can still see a lot of change. I'm setting it up for the rest of my life. I'm not going to be, I'm not deadlifting 500 pounds anymore. I'll do 315 stuff. I feel like it. I'll go heavy, but heavy relative to what I do. You don't need to do 500 pounds. People that keep on doing that shit, those are the ones that have canes and walkers and they're jacked up the rest of your life. Don't be stupid. That'll be, that's a whole other daily swole. I got a couple daily swoles more. That's just, don't be an idiot. Don't be an idiot. You don't need to be that 45 year old guy deadlifting 500 pounds. You're going to be in a wheelchair and I'm going to be running circles around you. So just be smart, but this is the peak. Well, these are two peaks. Everest and K2 are here for the show. Oof. Get some good lighting on Periscope. Am I right? Or am I f- f- really right? Ah, yeah, I look fantastic. Look how enormous I am. Ah. I'll say for a few minutes after I'm Periscope and Busker. See you tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern time. Double deuce. Peace out.